All right, Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. In the second here, we're going to set this up for the podcast. Shabbat Shalom to everybody. How are you doing? Come on in, come on in. Inside, but no board today. <clears throat> Even though we do have a lot of great information for you. We're excited to be able to give you some information that's going to be a blessing to you. Uh, before we get started, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in you. Have a sight. He is our strength and the Redeemer, and it's in his name, which is his authority, that we pray, praise, proclaim, protect, and protect this message. Amen. Amen. Um, we're going to talk about the ingredients, specifically the ingredients for wealth. How about that? Talking about the ingredients for wealth. Right? Ingredients are crucial because ingredients help you with the recipe, right? So we want to talk about, and hey, uh, Shabbat Shalom, Dashima, thanks for the agreement. Shabbat Shalom, Big Brother Tom, and Shabbat Shalom, Sharice, Shea Butter, Sister Stephen, Sister Sonia. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Hopefully you're doing well on your travels. Shabbat Shalom. Um, Sister Betty, keep on going and conquering your stuff as far as your workout. Proud of you. Proud of you. Let me say that looking in the camera. Proud of you. <laughs> um, let me see something. So those who, well, actually, let me make sure I get, I'm about to talk about, talk to those who were trying to set up on, on, uh, on Facebook, I don't even have the stuff set up yet for the podcast. All right. And by the way, don't forget Shabbat Shalom podcast. That'll be at 10 a.m. We're back to 10 a.m., 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Um, Eastern every Shabbat, every Saturday. Um, so brothers and sisters, please be aware of that. Be ready for that. And we're thankful and grateful um, for those who will be able to uh, participate in that. We're going to be focusing on our sisters today, and I'm excited. We're going to have a panel. Uh, my wife's going to be taking over sir, for the next four weeks on um, the podcast, so I'm excited about that, number one, to be able to hear from my wife. Um, number two, though, to have you guys join in on a great conversation. Um, you guys, of course, uh, can call in as time allows and things of that nature. Um, I'll be kind of the engineer for today making this stuff happen so we're excited and grateful for that i'm gonna go ahead and talk about let's see um up oh, yeah thank you to the moderators by the way jambo habari mimi ni kofi nina franco katana nuwewe shabbat shalom bokatov um namaste um akwaba um um hello to everybody thank you to the moderators so we appreciate you we appreciate it everybody we give all praise to the most high yahava elohim who lives a life that's able, uh, I'm sorry, and uh, we pr we thank, I'm thankful to Yahweh for my wife, the honor of Maya, who lives a life that's able to be honored. Um, we're getting ready to get, we've got, we thank you for those who are going to watch this later on YouTube, those that are watching this um, on TikTok Live, those of you that are with us on the podcast, and, um, and then of course, uh, and then of course, those who will be um, watching this on YouTube in a second. So we're getting ready to start. You guys hear me typing on here. Looks like we figured out what was going on with the camera issue for Facebook. And we should have the rest. Let's see. Okay, so we got Facebook up and running. We have the podcast going. Uh, we're appreciative and thankful for everybody who's with us on all the platforms that are going on. Um, let me see. Okay, so we're fine. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we've got everything going on on Facebook as well. We appreciate you guys for being with us. Um, I've been growing my hair for a while. Not sure how long in all honesty anymore. Um, okay, so today we're going to talk about the ingredients for wealth. These are ingredients. So this is not the recipe. 
right? We have a lot of things we've been talking about as far as the recipe is concerned for wealth. Because if you talk about the recipe for something, the recipe is the instructions on how to put the ingredients and everything together, right? Um, however, uh, no, I'm, I'm obviously not on the WWE right now. Thank you, Werner, for being on. I appreciate you. So um, this is what we're speaking on specifically as far as what? As far as um, us being in a better position and, and looking at things and what is it that when somebody is wealthy what are some ingredients so ingredients what are these people going to possess not the recipe right we the recipe is what we talk about all the time right holistically holistically when we're speaking about different things being whole uh, being able to travel being able to meditate being able to be spiritually and um, enhanced being able to be sovereign being able to bless people in the community all these different things whatever right um, oh, thank you. It was that Booch Brown, I think. I don't know if I pronounced that right, correctly, but thank you. Um, you know, thank you, by the way, for the likes, for the shares, um, for the gifts, for um, being part of the community. If you're joining, I don't really believe in saying we have you, um, YouTube or TikTok or Facebook or Twitter or whatever followers. Um, you know, but we're thankful and grateful. Thank you to those, once again, that are listening on all the platforms. We appreciate you on YouTube. We appreciate you on TikTok. We appreciate you on Facebook. We appreciate you on the podcast, all right? Um, and we want to again, again talk about the ingredients to wealth. Now, wealth is not just riches. So I'm not going to talk about money only, even though money can be considered to be what? Um, wealth, right? Money is part of wealth. And if you have questions, comments, and concerns, by the way, especially if you're on TikTok, um, you know, you can um, always just put them in this little comment or question mark box right here. If you're on Facebook, we'll just answer them direct. If you're on the podcast, we can answer them direct. If you're on YouTube, right now we're not live on YouTube. We're building up our YouTube channel again. So you can put something in the comment section. I will get back to you ASAP. Um, so when we talk about these different things and we have this different conversation uh, or this type of conversation, rather, we need to make sure that we're in a position and in a place to where we can ensure that we understand what wealth actually is, right? What wealth actually, what is. Um, so wealth is not just money. It's not just being rich, right? Wealth is being holistic. The word holy even talks about being whole. It talks about being one, right? If you're going to be holy, put a W in front of that H, right? Um, if you're going to put be holy, right? Put a W in front of that H, right? It's talking about being whole. What's the most important commandment? Hero Yashtea, right? You have a Elohim, you have a Elohim Aleph, you know, um, you translate it as the Lord Elohim, the Lord Elohim is one and you must what? Um, Ahaba, you must love him with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. Become one, connected to the one, and then therefore you cannot be double-minded. You cannot be twisted um, easily all over the place, right? And uh, thank you, you moderators, for banging it out. I appreciate it. So now that we've established, right, that wealth is not just money. Wealth is what you eat. Wealth is how you think, right? Knowledge is wealth. Knowledge, by the way, is just intimacy. So intimacy with intel or information. Intelligence is information, right? Matter of fact, we, we, we give, just to give you a little game, it's about being what? Smart. And being smart leads to what? When I'm smart, that leads me to, uh, smart is just the capacity. So let me say it like this. Smart. Once you get smart, then we want you to have, that then lead to information or intelligence, right? So smart, intelligence, right? And then wisdom, and then now, and then, I'm sorry, the wisdom, wisdom, am I saying it correct? Yeah, wisdom and then power. So people say knowledge is power, right? But you got to be smart first. Now, smart just means what? Smart doesn't mean um, that you are actually using your intelligence well. Smart just means that you have information, right? So when somebody says, um, you know, so, so somebody says when I'm, I'm trying to do something smart, Right. Or you should have done that or that wasn't smart, et cetera. What they're saying is you should have had the capacity. Smart is just the capacity. I have the capacity to be able to do something that's smart. Intelligence is when you have intel, you have information. Right. And a lot of people lack information. Right. So since a lot of people lack information, we don't make great decisions. Right. So a lot of us who are from certain places, we will say and um, shalom to you. Um, you know, so a lot of us do not, who lack information will just say something along the lines of, you know, oh, I'm poor because people who have money want me to be poor. Now, there's truth in the statement. It's not a continuous statement, though, because 
there also is the fact that you're missing some information, right? So a lot of people have are smart. They have the capacity, right? A lot of people are in, um, but they lack intel. They lack information. We, we want to do again today is talk about information. There's a lot of information that's missing in the diaspora, right? I'm not saying the diaspora doesn't deal with people who are trying to oppress. I'm not trying to say that the diaspora doesn't deal with people who will just automatically try to cut you off or say different things. We're seeing that on the live right now where people are just coming on and, and saying, you're not this. It's not true. I don't want to listen, et cetera, et cetera, right? Like, that's fine. However, that's not, that's not what you know, we're, we're focusing on today. I want to give you ingredients. I want to give you information, right? So a lot of us are smart. We have the capacity to do things. A lot of us are missing the intel, intelligence, the information, and then the information will lead you to a place to where now you have this thing called wisdom, wisdom, where you can dominate from a wise place, right? You have to learn the recipe, of course. So we're going to talk a little bit about recipe. We're going to talk a little bit about the fact of uh, like people aren't using some of this correct. Some people might have um, investing, but do you know how to invest? Do you know how to continue to invest, right? So there's a lot of different things that we are going to discuss um, today and we're going to talk about. Um, however, we have to be honest in it in that sometimes, sometimes the, the fact has become, if we just talk about the fact and the context, contextual facts, a lot of us are so busy being caught up in somebody else must help us, that that also feeds into blame. See, there's some truth. We're not going to act like it's 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 100% accurate, but there is some truth when somebody comes to us and says, stop playing the blame card. Be a victor, not a victim. Now, you shouldn't want to be a victor because if you know what that word victor means, being a victor is actually a pretty terrible thing to be, right? If you know about parades and stuff like that, you know, being a victor is something that's a terrible thing to be. At the end of the day, though, like... There's some truth in don't become so messed up to where you keep thinking somebody's supposed to give you a handout that now you can't do what you're supposed to do. Right. And a lot of us have, are in that place where we keep looking for the government to give us a handout. Right. Hey, the government, you guys need to make sure that we don't get the vaccine or that we do get the vaccine. Well, why can't you make a decision for yourself? Um, government, you need to make it easy for me to be able to buy a home. Well, why not just go and get some land for cheap? And the same, you, it actually might be cheaper for you to build the house than it is for you to pay it off. Um, even if you paid it off in a year, it, it might be cheaper for you to just get some land, build a home or find a home that's jacked up. But hey, if, if you got a thousand dollars free, you know, now because you're not paying on on rent, then why have a mortgage? Just own a home that's battered up, live inside of it, spend a thousand dollars on it every every month. Or whatever you spend it on rent. Some of you spending two thousand dollars a month on rent. Take your rent money and say, All right, I'm gonna take my rent money and I'm gonna keep investing it in my home and then build a brand new home and live inside of it. Right? Build a brand new home and live inside of that thing. A lot of people aren't trying to do that. Right? So so even in the blame game, yes, is it true that reparations is something that was taken, that was promised and all that? Sure. But what about inward reparations? We've talked about that before. We're going to have to bring that back too. that was taken down on the whole YouTube channel. But inward reparations, right? Like repair what's on the inside so that when you look at somebody, you don't have to ask them for anything. Because if these people who are, are who, if, if there's people out there who promise you something and they're not going to give you what they promised, why would you want to do business with them anyways? <laughs> right. Why, why would you want to do business with somebody anyways? And they can't, right? And they're 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 obviously not living inside of what they're supposed to do, right? If you have somebody, why would you want to be with a man that apparently is going to keep cheating on you? Why would you stay with that man? If a woman going to keep cheating on you, why would you stay with that woman? Right? So you got to talk about these things. You said, how do you heal? Um, I'll see if maybe when we're talking about that, because wealth is once again, not just about riches and stuff. So we'll just about money only. So maybe we'll hit that. But that's not my focus. I apologize. But prayerfully, you'll be able to hear some things that will probably help you to heal because we want you once again to be holistic, to be holy, to be one. Right. Um, I'm sorry. Use your name said or be equal. Or be equal. Um, I didn't catch the first part of it, but I, I would tell you this, that even when it comes to being wealthy, wealthy people don't believe in equality. Now, that's going to mess with some people's head, but I, I, the Bible doesn't believe in equality either, by the way. Nowhere where you see in the Bible that you're equal to somebody else. You're not supposed to be. There's law that protects everybody's rights, and the law has to stay put. 
the words are supposed to stay put, right? Matthew chapter 5, verse 18, we should not change one jot or tittle. That's the most minuscule of measurements, nor even the way the Yao, the way that it's even written, right? However, there's a lot of different things that, um, you know, you see in there. Everybody's a different person. Everybody's dealt with differently. Shalom, Wisconsin in the house. Thanks for being on. Thank you for the likes once again. Thank you for the shares. Thank you for being on with us. Thank you for the gifts, all those great things that help us in the community, help us with, um, help us to ensure that we're going down the righteous path. Uh, with righteous just literally means, a, as a word that means right legal standing. So we appreciate you. We want to talk about the ingredients of wealth. And it's important that you get the ingredients right. If I can just make that a point too, because a lot of people take ingredients that you, you take things that people have given you Right. Um, you do all this stuff and then you don't. Hello, Shalom, Ohio. Um, you, you, you take a lot of things that people give you and you don't use it right in a recipe. So understand all this stuff comes with a recipe. Right. All these things come with you should be using this. Well, the ingredients when somebody gives you a, re a recipe, understand the ingredients are not supposed to change. Right. <laughs> the ingredients are not supposed to change. Like somebody might say, well, I can't eat that. I'm allergic to that. So blah, blah. But hear what I'm saying. You're talking about the ingredients for wealth. If you're going to if, if, if I give you ingredients and I say and I give you a recipe, I say these are the ingredients. All right. If you want, I don't know if you want Kofi's, um, I don't know, black eyed peas recipe right and you're gonna make the black ip recipe well guess what i'm gonna give you the ingredients you know that i use and i'm gonna tell you exactly this is how long i cook it this is how i prepare the beans this is how i do this this is how i do that and now it's up to you to what to be obedient to the recipe if you decide to do something else or put something else in its place right and you decide to put something else in its place that means that even if you make something similar it is not what i what gave you. It's not what I wrote out. It's not what I taught. It's not what I said. It's not what I do. Therefore, if you get a different result, don't blame the recipe. Don't blame the ingredients. Blame what? Your lack of obedience, right? Hosea chapter four, verse six. We love to talk about it, right? Um, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. It doesn't say though that it perishes because you never learned it. It says it's not just that you lack the knowledge, which is the word for intimacy. It is also because you have rejected knowledge. Somebody gives you something and you reject it. I don't like where it's coming from. I don't like what the person looks like who's saying it. I don't like what um, what the person stands for. I don't like the fact that they don't believe in Elohim. I like I I I don't like the fact that they believe in Elohim, right? Uh, I I like the I don't like the fact they believe in my God or my nature or my witchcraft or this and that. Like at the end of the day, you're rejecting ingredients. You're re rejecting something that's going to help you to get what generational wealth. It's not just about you. It's about generational wealth. Wealth is something that is passed on generationally, right? If you're a success, right? If you're successful, if you're a success, you must understand that anybody who is a success is there. You said to clarify wealth is as in money. Wealth is rich. Riches are part of money. What well, money is, I'm sorry, riches are part of wealth. Money is part of wealth. It is not the end all be all, right? Like money is supposed to be a tool to get you something else. Right. Scared money don't make money. So if you're somebody who thinks that wealth is just money only, you're going to mess up because guess what? If you just have a bunch of cash somewhere, cash is a depreciating asset. Right. Cash is what? It is a depreciating asset. If you have a bunch of cash, cash is printed out all the time, which means that if cash is printed out all the time, the more cash there is, the less value it is, which means that if you just got a bunch of cash sitting somewhere, it depreciates every day. Right. It appreciates every day, right? Ukwele, right? It appreciates every day. Deep depreciates. You want to have something that appreciates. Matter of fact, people should appreciate you. When I say I appreciate you, what I'm saying is, is that I should add value to you. That's part of what we're going to talk about is one of the ingredients. Whenever you find wealthy people, you, find, you will find people who are wealthy. And the problem is, is that people have been writing down recipes and have been getting specific instructions, have been told specific ingredients, and then you don't use what you're told. Well, I don't like that, so I'm going to put something else in there. How do you know that you won't like it in this recipe? Right? I don't like white mushrooms. I'm going to use portobello mushrooms. I don't like portobello mushrooms. I'm used to shiitake mushrooms. Well, the portobello mushrooms might be the thing that you need because the portobello mushrooms, part of the reason they put in the recipe might be because it helps to cleanse the mucus in your system. You might need that portobello mushroom. Right? You might, you might need the portobello mushroom. 
Thank you, Rob. Appreciate you. I appreciate you. Right. Like so. So what we're doing is trying to give you ingredients today. I'm not right. The recipe is holistic. So everything we talk about is a recipe for wealth because the recipe is supposed to be what what you do with the ingredients. I want to give you specific things when people that you consider to be wealthy, when you look at people today and you look in capitalism today and you look in different countries and different areas and different arenas and sports and all this stuff. Right. If you look at anybody who is wealthy. Right. Whether you agree with their stance and stuff, we can talk about that stuff later. Right. Thank you for the love and ransom. Um, thank you for the love, everybody. Appreciate it. If, if you look at people who are wealthy today. OK, you're going to find they carry these ingredients. I was going to come with three. I spoke with my wife yesterday and asked her some questions regarding this, because whenever we learn something. Right. You said I'm trying to indoctrinate you. I'm not trying to indoctrinate you at all. So let me show you how much we're not trying to indoctrinate you. You have a great day because this is for those who have ears to hear. So be blessed. Um, so when you talk about trying to indoctrinate somebody or even that, well, let me get back on track. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for saying we don't need to focus on that, right? You must understand that when it comes to these things, there's, there's, I had three for you. I spoke with my wife last night and introduced these three. And actually in questioning her, she helped me to develop a fourth one. So we're going to talk about four ingredients. It might be more, but we're going to start off with four, right? Four ingredients that we that you will find in every wealthy person in every wealthy society in every wealthy position that you might see when you try to um get a job or whatever and you put your resume out and all that You're, we're going to talk about at least four things of wealth i see you uh space by the way shalom shabbat shalom shabbat shalom shara tiger tigers uh mayo with faith if i said that right um <laughs> uh, and uh mayo with faith and um I, I didn't see the last person on there it does starts with to use. I couldn't see the whole name. Thank you for being on on the podcast. Thanks once again for those who are on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook podcast. We appreciate you. All right, here we go. Here we go. First ingredient that you're going to find when it comes to people who are wealthy, families that are wealthy, etc. Right. First ingredient. Actually, I guess we have five, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm lying. Let's go with number five. Number one, we already talked about this, but the first one, number one is what? They have information. They have information. Now, it's unfair sometimes who gets the information, how they get the information, who doesn't have the information, and why they do not have the information. But number one, they have information. Right? I'm not going to use the board the whole time today, but I'll make sure I write these down so at the end of this I can show you guys the board so you can make sure that you, if you stick around through the whole thing, if you don't write it out or if you don't take the, you know... Uh, Minister Tam was very good at, at, at making sure we're in the comment section correct and representing what we're saying. So check out Minister Tamara as she's writing this stuff out for us. Right, She already has the first one down. So number one is going to be information. I'll show this to you guys on the board later. I'm not going to be using the board as much as I normally use it. So don't worry about you know having to see it right now. I'm just putting it down so that we can go back to it because this, this might change. You know, we, We're Holy Ghost led over here. So this might change as we go through. Number one, though, information, right? Now, you got to start saying to yourself, right? You got to start saying to yourself, what is, what? where do I go to get the information on anything? So what is your source? We've talked, we talk about this a lot, right? What is your culture? Your culture is your source, right? What Do you have a culture of wealth? Hear what I'm saying? I'm not saying that you can't be hip hop and be wealthy, right? Because hip hop is not just rap music. A lot of people get that mixed up. So I'm not saying you can't be hip hop, but do you have a culture of wealth? You can be in hip hop and still be in the culture of wealth. You can be in hip hop and have nothing to do with the culture of wealth, right? You can be in, um, in a, like there's a lot of people who grew up rich and end up poor, right? Just because you grew up rich doesn't mean you grew up in the culture of wealth. Where's your source? Where are you getting this stuff from, Right? What are you, what are you, what is it that you're getting? What is it that you're doing? Like an ingredient that every um, person of wealth, not of riches, of wealth, right? Not just you a landowner, but you still can't afford to make sure your family eats. There's some, some of those too. I'm talking about somebody who's wealthy, who's holistic in wealth, who's somebody who is holistic in spirit, in the spirit, who's holistic in the vibe that they give off, who's holistic concerning the way that they raise their children, who's holistic in the, in the mindset that they have and the thought process that they have, right? And all these things. Right. Who's holistic in all these things? Have I ever heard about it? Yes. Have you heard about it? And what's your I guess I would ask, what is it that you would like me to talk about? If you like to 
to focus on Acts 2.38. But we're talking about, once again, wealth, right? Spiritual wealth, um, physical wealth, your wealth for your soul, your psychology, right? Um, we're, that's what we're talking about as far as wealth. Hey, Shabbat Shalom, Line Painter. How you doing, my friend? So, so we're talking about the ingredients of wealth. That's the focus. And number one, one of the things that you will find in everybody, in everybody, right, who is there is they have information. And that means that they're, right? But guess what? You might have information too. So the question once again is, where are you getting your information from? Right? Where are you getting your information from? Thank you, Eric. I appreciate the love. Like, where are you getting your information from? It says in the Bible that he will go by many names. I mean, okay. He does. Yahweh, Yeshua, Emmanuel, Ruach HaKadosh. Why don't you want to use those would be my question. But regardless, once again, that's somebody even talking about wealth. So once again, where's the source? Somebody's going to tell you, for example, in the English Bible, which is okay, but not without culture. So my question to the person even saying that about that, let's look at wealth, how wealth can be affected by not being holistic. Shabbat Shalom, Sister Beverly, how are you doing? So let's look at something even with spiritual wealth. Somebody's going to say his name He'll go by many names, this and that or whatever. What I would say to that person, I see you, Philly. I'm not coming at you. I just want to show you something with wealth, right? Just so don't. hopefully you're not getting the vibe that I'm attacking you, right? Check this out. Um, well, yeah, what is, a, what is a profit of man if he gained the whole world and lose his soul? Okay, so thank you for bringing that up. I was waiting for you. I guess you just went the simple route with that as far as you're attacking it without knowing what I'm talking about. Holistic health. Did you hear me? Were you on earlier? When you talk about being holy, you put a W before that H. What is the most important commandment? Yashva HaMashiach, he quoted Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. What does Deuteronomy 6, 4 say? Right? What is, um, James, uh, when we talk about James chapter 1, verse 8, being double-minded. Right? When we talk about being double-minded. Shalom, um, um, SG, how you doing? When we talk about being double-minded. Right? Don't be double-minded. That's not just talking about cognitive dissonance as far as stuff you think it's talking about you got to live what you preach that's wealth see you're thinking that wealth is just money if you think that wealth is money you're lost and if you think that money has nothing to do with wealth because it doesn't say that money is the root of all evil it says that the love of money is the root of all evil we're going to get into that when we get into our second point about people that are wealthy right but also if we're going to keep it 100 on that too it also has a scripture in there that says what that money answereth all things, which means that it might not be the, the, the whole answer, but it will definitely help you with certain things. Like the fact that I don't have to give up my time and time and effort and energy to make sure somebody else is getting money means that I have more time to invest in my own family. That's wealth. And that's generational wealth. I'm leaving that for my children's children, right? To where they're not going to have to worry about going out there, busting their behind for something that's not even part of their identity, Sitting there talking about, okay, well, I don't want to feel bad, so I'm going to go to the Christmas party even though I don't even believe in Christmas. Right? They don't have to make decisions like that. They don't have to think about it. They don't have to worry about, I'm going to put my child in a school that I know is not even going to teach them the truth. The, the school can't even teach them that George Washington is the ninth president. They're going to teach him that he's the first president. I can't have my child and stuff where they're literally going to learn a lie. Right? And I know that homeschool children, percentage-wise, do way better in college than children that go to public schools. Or go to private schools. Why would I subject my child to something that would cause them to fail even in the wicked system that people are telling me to put them in, right? That's wealth. You're dealing with money only, thinking that money is wealth. I've never said that. Matter of fact, wealthy people don't believe that money is, is, is all there is to wealth. Usually people who are not wealthy believe that money is all there is to wealth, right? Because they, even without saying that they have a love of money, they have a love of money. Right. Thank you, Sister Deshima. I see you. Right. I appreciate that. Right. So a lot of people are on here talking about all that. Yeah. Look at the birds of the field. We already did the Sermon on the Mount series, Matthew chapter six. Right. So Matthew chapter six, verse 33, seek ye first the kingdom of Elohim and all his righteousness. That's his right legal standing. And then all these things that you're looking for shall be added unto you. Verse 34. And give no thought for the morrow for the morrow will already has already been set up to take care of the things that it needs to for itself sufficient, even for the days that will be evil. Right. Then go backwards to make sure you get the context. Yeah. So the birds are, are, are taken care of and the nest are taken care of. So he says, he says, which one of you can add a stature to you by worrying? Why would you be worried about these things? See, wealthy people don't worry. They have enough information to not worry about stuff. They have enough wealth to not worry about stuff, not just 
money wise because there's a lot of people that have money and they jump out of buildings robin williams was, was was rich would you say he was wealthy if he killed himself <laughs> you see what i'm saying right but what about proverbs chapter 1 verse 3 see this is information even in the bible we're focusing on only certain information that we're limited even in the bible um, Proverbs chapter 1 verse 3 it talks about making sure that we get something that's going to be wise it's going to bless us but also it says it's going to cause you to learn about equity and yet we don't talk about equity your Bible says what about equity your Bible deals with money Malachi chapter 3 talking about the Messiah who's going to come and then starts talking about the window of heaven that he's going to open up and pour us out a blessing thank you for the love Rose appreciate that I haven't seen that one before that's awesome thank you right it's, that's, that's your Bible what about um, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22. Everybody loves the end of it. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. However, it actually says, or really, it really says the wealth of the sinner. Nevertheless, people like to say the wealth of the wicked laid up for the just. What about, though, in your very Bible, right, where it'll also say, right before that, that you have to be ready to take care of your children's children. So if you're not ready to have generational wealth, a mindset of that, stop talking about the wealth of the wicked that's laid up for you. The wicked are getting wealth because they at least understand generational wealth. And here we have people fighting against wealth. How are you going to fight against wealth? And the Bible says that you should have wealth. I mean, he might have done it during a ritual fight. Either way, however you want to look at it, guess what? He's not here because obviously there's something that he wasn't wealthy. And that's my point. Right? So when we talk about the scripture, we can't be incomplete. Even talking about scripture in and of itself, a lot of people want to talk about scripture and can't even tell me what Barashiat is. If you don't know what Barashiat is, which is the very first word and the actual name of Genesis, but it's the very first word in your Bible, which literally proves everything in the Bible to be true as far as what our faith is in. If you don't even know what that word is or means, then how are you even going to talk about the a Bible being a place of wealth? Right? How are we going to talk about that if you don't even understand what the Bible says, the first word of it? You missed it. If you missed the first word, then you can't even talk about the rest of it. We might mention downward mobility a little bit. Um, I want to, I got to stay focused though, but um, we, we, we might get into that if you just give me a little bit of time. All right. Thank you for the question though. Um, so wealth, you said wealth can be, me uh, wealth can be measured by happiness of a man's family. I mean, a man's family that is great is that's that's wealth. My my family is happy. When my family's happy, when my children are happy, when my wife is happy, like I'm wealthy, right? Like even if I got to struggle and do some stuff, I'll struggle for wealth. Peace, peace in my house is wealth, right? Right. I mean, Morningstar. I, I don't know how to answer that question. Uh, I, I don't, I don't, I've never said, I didn't say that it wasn't. Maybe you need to, I don't know if you're used to people kicking you out because they find out you're Hindu or something, but of course you can listen. I, I don't know how to answer that. Uh, uh, you know, because wealthy people don't worry about loving you based off of your religion. Mm. And I'm a pastor saying that. So I, I, you know, but once again, we have information. A lot of people don't have that information. So number one is information, right? Here's the second thing I'm going to get into, right? That we just kind of already spoke against, spoke against a little bit, but we want to make sure that we write this out on our list. I'll make sure that this list is for you guys later. Um, you know, I just have everything focused on this, on this place. We don't necessarily need the board. I'm not going to be writing a bunch of notes, but I'll make sure at the end of this that we put, you know, put it where you can see the list, right? So first is that wealthy people have information. Secondly, on the list, we have to understand that wealthy people are not guilty. Now, time out. Somebody going to say, oh, I know a wealthy person that committed a crime. That's not what I'm talking about. I had to get over this in my life. When you get to a place where you're wealthy, when you start dealing in real wealth, people are going to try to make you feel bad for being wealthy. You thought I was talking about Christianity? I'm not a Christian. The Bible existed before Christianity, but I'm talking about biblical principles. Uh, but once again, people are going to make you feel bad for what? People are going to try to make you feel bad for, for being wealthy. People are going to make you feel bad for being wealthy. People are going to make you feel bad when somebody says, man, I want to sow into you. I used to feel bad about that. I really did. I used to feel like extremely terrible, like 
somebody would be like, oh, see, you're a musician and the church is paying you. Now, this dude never been to church or been to church like once or twice in his entire life since he hasn't had to go. Shows up for the first time in like five years and, and then in front of me talking to somebody else tries to hit me with a, a comment through somebody else. Man, you know, it's good, man, that you play music and you don't have to be paid for it. I'm looking at this dude like, well, you don't even come to church. What, what's the conversation? Right. And meanwhile, people don't comprehend like how many years I played for free. How many times that I started getting $175 a week and thought that was cool. And then all of a sudden, because the church wasn't right, ended up going somewhere else and paying for nothing or you get paid for nothing. And every once in a while, they take up a love offering. And there are only 10 people that come there and they'll say, we want to bless you with $10 for what you did for this last couple months. Right. But people don't understand right that i was wealthy i was i was getting invested in now i've come to a place like i, I tell you like there are people that used to you know 25 dollars man you preached the word man that was so great and i would feel guilty because somebody wanted to bless me with 25 dollars because i gave them something that they used to be able to get five thousand dollars 25 dollars was nothing right but people will make you feel bad never feel bad right um the the second ingredient is to understand you're not guilty if somebody if, if you're blessed with wealth it's not because you did something bad. We have this wild stuff because we grew up, a lot of us grew up in situations. We grew up in the hood we grew up in the projects. Maybe we grew up on the streets. We grew up anti-government. We grew up all this different stuff where it's like, yo, my, anybody that's got money, they out there trying to rob you. No, man, I'm not guilty. Like I, it's, I'm supposed to be wealthy. Right. When people come on here and try to say stuff, somebody got on here and tried to say that I was bad because we started a YouTube channel because my son's been asking to do a YouTube channel since he was like four. He's six years old now, six and a half. Finally started letting him do it two weeks ago, making sure he had himself together because we want him to do something that children can look at as an example. So don't just go in there doing only fun stuff or go in there playing video games, but you're going to have to be an example. You're going to have to talk about things that children need to hear, even at your age. We want people to be able to come. Right. And and somebody came on here legit. Some of y'all remember this came on here talking about, oh, you're somebody, I can't believe you. You're going to try to prostitute your child. Prostitute my child? His YouTube channel is set up where it's made for children. If it's made for children, I can't profit. <laughs> right? And if I wanted to pro prostitute my child, I've been on live longer than he's been alive. Alive, Right? I've been on YouTube, TikTok. Uh, well, not TikTok because it didn't exist, but YouTube, Facebook, other platforms. I've been traveling the world. Like, I've got... You know, videos of me on DVDs and stuff in different places, been in huge facilities, been in facilities where maybe one person showed up, right? I've been around for a while. Go and look up how many times that my son is walking around and and, and a, as a baby, I'm making sure his face is showing. You won't see it, right? But somebody who doesn't know me is trying their best to what? To make me guilty. They want me to feel guilty because I'm wealthy. And you know why it is? Because they're not wealthy. If they were wealthy, they wouldn't fix their mouth to say something on you. And you got to comprehend, right? When you start making decisions about wealth, spiritual wealth, how many of you decided you're going to be better spiritually? And as soon as you started being better spiritually, it's your own family, sometimes your own spouse, sometimes your own children, who were the first people to step in line. Your friends that you thought were going to be there, they were the first ones to step in line talking about, oh, you're, you don't know what you're talking about because you're breaking away from their tradition, right? But I'm not guilty. Wealthy people are not guilty. My wife and I brought this into discussion when we were talking about it, right? And she brought up the information. So these first two points are actually came out of the conversation with her, where she literally, you know, put this out where we were talking. And it was like, yeah, you know, people try to make us feel bad. When you start doing things that other people can't do, they try to make you feel bad. Like you're the reason why they're not doing what they're supposed to. But guess what? All I'm doing is I'm made, I made sure I studied the ingredients. I studied the recipe and I don't go away from the recipe. If they tell me to do, you know, to invest this much, if somebody, I heard somebody say this. I told, I've said this even for people who've taken our cryptocurrency class. I've talked about this on lives before. I've told you guys, right? Hey, how you doing, T? I've told you guys before, like, I listen to a rapper. And he's a battle rapper, so he's not even that popular in a lot of circles. I don't even know his name, real talk. You know, but he basically came out talking about that somebody told him how to have that he needed to have um, seven streams of income. He says so when he heard that, he worked to have seven streams of income. He said because people who have seven streams of income over a time, oh, it's only a matter of time before they become millionaires. That was a recipe. So guess what? He went out and did it. When I heard him say it, I did a little bit of research and stuff. I said, yep, that's, that's what we're going to do. And I started working on seven different streams of income. Right? I followed the recipe. I looked for the ingredients. Right? And people are going to make try to make you feel guilty for simply doing what they can do themselves. Real talk. 
right? When you start being extraordinary, extraordinary, and the and people want to remain in the mediocrity, which we call the ordinary, they want to stay in ordinary. They want you. They don't want you to be an extraordinary. That's crab in the barrel mentality, right? But don't be mad at me, right? Like it's amazing how many friends and family I've been telling for years, right? They didn't see it, right? So they didn't want to necessarily receive it. But I kept telling them for years, like, yo, this is about to happen. Like we're about to travel. We're about to go to different lands. We're about to start speaking to different people. People are going to start picking up on this. Like I have, I've had a dream since I was a child that we're going to be talking to, to, to people where I can't even see the number. It starts off with me on a podium. I don't even know if I'm a po or if I'm, I have a podium. I don't know if I'm up on a stage. I think I'm down. No, I am down low. I'm on the same level as everybody else. I'm not above them. I'm on the same level. It starts with one person listening and that becomes two behind them and three behind them and four behind them. You know, think like a bowling ball pin, except it just keeps going and going and going and going to the point to where finally I can't even see the people. I can't see what their faces look like. I can't see the color of their skin. I can't see, but I know these people, there's people, I know it's me speaking and i know it gets to a place to where it's people that i can't even see right now i told people for the longest time this is what was going to happen i told people we were going to be able to get to a higher level and people didn't want to hear it right and now that i got there those same people now they're trying to make me feel guilty no i'm not gonna feel guilty if i go to your place and you still living in poverty like i was with poverty with you we could have grown together I'm not going to feel guilty if you're still struggling to keep a church around and you can't get people to come to a church. When I told you, like, this church thing, I'm not saying that it's not for you. I'm just telling you it's not for me. And here's some principles that are, I'm going to use. If you like to use them, even in your church thing, like, it might help you with growth. You don't get growth. Now you're mad and frustrated with me because we might reach 10,000 people on, in a day. But that's not on me. That's on you. You could have done the same thing. Matter of fact, I wanted you to do the same thing. Matter of fact, I invited you to speak here. Matter of fact, I invited you to come on this and do this or whatever, but you didn't find this to be something, somebody that was a gateway to what you wanted, right? Which is fine. You weren't a confidant. You might've been a um, constituent. You might've been a comrade, right? Confidants are for you. Constituents are for what you're for. Um, comrades are against what you're against. There's a lot of people that were with us that were against what we were against, but they weren't really for us. And there's a lot of people that roll with us that are for what we're for, but if they think they can get it through some other means, they'll leave us in a heartbeat. That's fine. Cool. That's a season. And I'm not mad at you, right? But those who were rock, rock with me, who were for me, and I don't make the mistake to believe that that's every single person that watches. I don't make the mistake of thinking all people on Facebook are my friends. I don't make the point a mistake of thinking that if I know 30 people that I'm around all the time, that all 30 of them are for me, right? The people who are for me, right? The few that are for me, that will be there no matter what happens, right? That will drop everything at a, at, at a, um, you know, at, at a drop of a hat. They will, right? They will drop everything that quickly to be able to make sure that my family and I are okay. Those people that are for us, they'll be there for us, right? And therefore, I don't feel guilty when people who don't even rock with me like that try to make me feel guilty. I'm not guilty. I'm not guilty because I'm wealthy. I'm not guilty because my wife loves me. I'm not guilty because, um, you know, you have problems in your marriage. I'm not guilty because you didn't want to make the right decision. I'm not guilty because you still on the same corner selling the same thing and you could have stopped selling that rock so you could be where we at now. Like, I'm not guilty of that. I'm not guilty that you backtracked. I'm not guilty that you stayed. Like some people, they'll stay in the same position and here you are. And now all of a sudden you're doing the righteous things. You get to the same level, then you pass them up. And then they try to say, well, you know, why didn't you bring me up? It's like, you didn't even bring me up. And then I gave you the principles and then you laughed at me because I was down here. Then all of a sudden I passed you up and now all of a sudden, why didn't I bring you up? That don't make no sense. I'm not guilty of that. I'm not guilty because I have peace and you don't. Like people especially, look, in the pastoring game, I get that all the time. Why won't you drop everything? I, I got hundreds of people I'm talking to. Sometimes, sometimes you know, literally 20, 30 people in, in a day, 100, 100 plus people I'm going to talk to in a week. And you mad at me because you made a decision or something happened with you. And because I have a family, because I already have responsibility, because I'm already supposed to be on a schedule, because I'm already supposed to do all these different things. Right. You said use whatever translation I want. Yes, for says something different. I don't even know what you're talking about. I guess you're saying what that I'm supposed to. I'm opposing principles. What principle am I opposing? <laughs> what principle am I imposing by not being guilty? I would say Romans chapter eight, verse one, right? If you want to go down the Roman road, right? Romans chapter one, verse 11. I've written this thing. Why did Paul write Romans? He said, I wrote it so that it would be established, right? Romans three twenty three that the wages of sin is, I'm sorry, um, that all of sin have fallen short of the glory of Elohim, right? Okay. Uh, the, 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 the Ephesians, sorry, Romans chapter, Romans chapter six, verse 23 
The wages of sin is death, but the gift of Elohim is eternal life. Oh, I skipped over Romans 5, 8, which also says that he commended this love for us, that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. You said no use the scriptures. You gave three excerpts from the gospel. I, I, I don't. Ne nevertheless, um, um, so using the scriptures, right? Uh, I've used quite a few scriptures, but I guess we're not going to count those, but that's okay. Um, I don't understand exactly. Maybe I'm just not understanding. Anyways, though, Romans chapter 8, verse 1 said, then says what? There is now, therefore. So therefore, because of what? Because this thing has been established. Because, yeah, I I, I um, have sinned and fallen short. However, Yeshua died for me, right? And he died for me because the wages of sin was death. But the gift that he's given me is eternal life. The wealth that he's going to introduce us to is eternal life, right? Being fellow heirs, even that's wealth. The fellow heirs with who? With Yeshua HaMashiach, right? Now Romans 8, 1 says, therefore, there's no condemnation. There's no condemnation. I'm not guilty. There's no condemnation. What? For those who, 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 who love him and what really, really, really what it says is what? That we follow after the spirit, the righteous, rather than after the flesh. Right? So once again, what is wealth? Now, if the standard that you're talking about is not my standard, then we have a different conversation. But my standard is what? Is wealth. My standard is what? Is wealth. My standard is what? Is wealth. Right? So my standard is different. As far as wealth, spiritual wealth, right? So there's no condemnation. I'm not going to condemn myself, let alone allow somebody I don't even know. Shalom, Cole. How you doing? Thank you, Tiger Tigers. Yeah, there's no zero. No means none. Nada. Nunca. <laughs> right? Settle. There's no condemnation for me, right? As long as I'm following principles that are what? Spiritual and not following after things that are not eternal. The flesh. Things that are wicked rather than things that are righteous and right legal standing. Right. And Shabbat Shalom to everybody. All right. So 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 I'm not going to allow myself to feel guilty or be in condemnation or have to be beat up by something that's not even a biblical principle. When you talk about biblical principles, let's keep on going, though. Now, because there's no condemnation, Romans 8, 11 says what? That the same spirit. Right. That rose Christ from the dead. Right. Is, is the, the same spirit that rose him from the dead is in me and will quicken my mortal body, will make me alive because there's no condemnation. Once I release condemnation, now the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead is in my body, will quicken me and cause me to live. Now Romans 8, 19 says that there's somebody out there looking. It says the creature, not the son, but the creature is looking for the manifestation to the sons of Elohim. Because I'm not dealing with condemnation and I won't condemn myself because I'm going to follow after righteous principles, including spiritual wealth, right? Well, wealth is everything. Right. If you don't take care of your temple, that's a spiritual principle. Your spirit is housed. Do you not know that even the, mo the, the temple that you're in is the temple of the most high Elohim? Right. So if he's living inside of you, but you don't take care of the flesh, something's wrong. I'm not saying cater to the flesh, but you should take care of it. Right. It's a holistic experience. Wealth is not just in one thing. If you can't be obedient with physical money and give a time, you can't be obedient with the spiritual stuff that's supposed to come eternal. That's a principle. <laughs> right? Like that's an eternal principle. We're trying to make, like we talked about yesterday, we're trying to make something that's fine intact and trying to break it up and then define it, destruct it, deconstruct it, and then try to be in a bad definition, a bad place that we are because we got a bad define, right? But we need to make sure this stuff is fine. It's intact. We need to keep it, keep it fine, which means it will be infinite. It will never be outside of what it was supposed to be. Right. And so Romans eight nineteen it says that there's somebody waiting on me to make sure I'm not living in condemnation, to make sure I'm not living and being guilty all the time. And they're, they're not even a son of the most high yet. Right. They're not even a son. It's just like, watch this. Where does all disease come from? Where does all disease come from? Do you think disease comes because of stuff or does it come because there's bad spiritual principles? Doesn't the Bible say obey your master? Yeah. What does the word master mean in Hebrew? I'm not going by a white person's perspective that they change stuff up. What does it mean when it said it in Hebrew? What were they talking about when it was black people talking about that? Before they added the word slave in, what was the word they used before there was a such word as slave? You know, slave is a new word, you know, relatively speaking. So before there was such a thing as the word slave based off of how they treated Slav people, what did the Bible say as far as that? Once again, I'm not going to feel guilty when somebody tries to give me something and they don't have the information. Remember, number one ingredient. Five ingredients we're talking about today. First ingredient both the people have is information, right? Context and facts, not just facts and not just context, but we put them together. They have to go together to be true, 
right? Before somebody rewrote something and put a word in that didn't even exist back then, and there was, yes, there was indentured servitude, which, by the way, had to be released, and you had to take care of your indentured servitude the same, the same as if they were your family, right? What the Kemetic people did to the Israelites, even though we're part Kemetic, but they did to us their own family. That was messed up, but the master is the teacher. That's what the word master means. Somebody else taught you. That's why they were masters over you. They weren't the a slave owner is a master. Why was a slave owner a master? Because the slave owner was teaching you how to be a slave to where he didn't even have to put you in shackles and you would work for him. That's why you call a slave owner a slave master, right? But not every slave owner was a good master because slave owners didn't teach. Some of them didn't teach their slaves well enough because the slaves still whooped up on them. <laughs> right? So he wasn't a very good master. He might have been a slave owner, so to speak, but he definitely wasn't a master. Right? So once again, I'm not going to feel guilty because I have information. Wealthy people don't feel guilty about having things. Wealthy people don't feel bad about you executing and, and, and keeping the recipe up. Yeah, well, even in that, yeah, that's that's the longest it would go, and they would leave it alone in the seventh year. Also, too, when you talk about indentured servitude, if, if the year of Jubilee came up, not just indentured servitude, but even debt, because debt is what causes people to be a slave. That's why people in America are still slaves. If you have to pay taxes, or if they come to you and they talk about this is how much percentage of the national debt that you have, that means you're a slave by law. The Corporation of the United States, 14th Amendment, and the, the, the United States Corporation then made a... Um, um, in 1871, actually made a second constitution that people live by thinking that they're living by the first constitution. These are, these are spiritual principles. People who have information, they come out of that. They don't live like that. I mean, we're talking Bible right here, but also, first and foremost, I talk about the culture. Culture informs beliefs. Beliefs will inform your emotions. Emotions will inform your feelings. Feelings will inform your mood. Your mood will inform your effort or energy. Your effort or energy will inform um, how you, in, you develop your habits. Your righteous principles. The word righteous literally just means to be in right legal standing. So the legal. So we're talking about kingdom legality, and we're talking about the laws as far as the kingdom, laws as far as marriage, laws as far as natural, natural the nature of things, laws as far as the universe, laws as far as um, um, law of first mention, right? Constitutional law, um, et cetera, et cetera. Law of attraction, right? It's going to come from culture. A lot of people don't comprehend the Bible because they're talking about a different culture. That's how you get your, your seven-year bankruptcy law because of what was even in the Bible. That's why I tell people, even if you don't believe in the Bible, even if you don't agree with it, guess what? You better learn it because they're twisting this thing and utilizing it, executing it against you every single day. That's why Yahshua said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, hey, I didn't come to destroy the law, but it might be fulfilled. Verse 18, don't change one jot or one tittle. Don't change the most minuscule of measurement or even the way it was written. Verse um, 19, you, uh, if those who say that you shouldn't follow law or don't follow law themselves, they are the least in the kingdom, but those that do the opposite, they are considered to be the greatest. And then lastly, he says, you better know the law better than the scribes and the Pharisees. The Pharisees were the people who were over everybody. The scribes were literally the people who wrote the law out. If you can't be no more than the people who are writing the law, they got you. They got you. Information. Right? Yahweh is everything. Or Yahweh wants you to have information. The one who is everything, he wants you to have information. Right? Yeah, if they ever do get rid of that name, yeah, you know, be ready. But that's why you need to have your own land to be ready to move or have some, some finances. Right? Right? I'm telling you. Like, people don't want to comprehend. They don't want to think about these things. But this is real. Right? This is real. All right? Check this out. Let's keep on going, though. Let's keep on going. You ready? So, continuing to go. Continuing to move on. All right? Here we go. So, now the third point that we want to make sure that you have is that this is something that wealthy people do not do. I don't know what I just did with my marker. <laughs> I just put my blue marker somewhere. Uh, I guess I have to write it in this old black marker. Oh, maybe I got it in my pocket. Hold on. Nope. Okay, I don't know what I do with my marker, but regardless, point number three, even though you guys can't see this yet anyways, we're going to show it to you at the end um, so you can make sure you have the list if you want to write it down. The third point, yeah, um, I know, or you can't see the screen. Well, I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you about that. I apologize. Um, the third point that you got to make sure wealthy people don't do, they don't exchange time. Actually, I'm just going to put time up. That's going to be too much. 
But they don't exchange time. Oh, here we go. There's a blue marker. There you go. Right? So wealthy people do not exchange time for things. They don't exchange time for promises of wealth. They don't exchange time for money. Wealthy people do not exchange time for anything that they don't consider to be worth that time. Yeah, I know. Once again, I know you can't see what I'm writing. I'm going to put that up later. I haven't set up. I have, I have more than just this one thing set up. I've got a bunch of stuff set up and it's facing me right now. So at the end, I will phrase all the stuff there. But number one, the ingredients. These are the ingredients for wealth. First is going to be information. Second is going to be um, that you can't allow people to make you feel guilty about stuff. Thirdly is that wealthy people don't exchange time for anything that's not worth that time. Time is one of the most absolute matter of fact, as far as time is concerned outside, right? If we get into eternity, we have another conversation. But as far as your your journey through time, time is the most consistent thing you're going to run into. Just about. <laughs> right. Like time is the most consistent thing you're going to run into. And why would you give up the most consistent thing? If it's that consistent, it means that it's valuable. Right. It means that you can measure things by it. Your money is not as consistent as time because as soon as you get money and you put a whole bunch of it somewhere, guess what? It depreciates. So people who are wealthy, they don't look at money as something. They, like if somebody says, I'll pay you a bunch of money for something, they, are in a, they, they don't think just because you're going to pay me a bunch of money, I should make the deal. A lot of people think that somebody's wealthy as soon as somebody offers them um, the ability to be able to go. You said read the Kabbalah then or the Quran. Um, I know of the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah is actually based off of Talmudic uh, Babylonian principles uh, that have to do with a false version of Baal um, and have to do with a false version of Elohim that I choose not to be about. Um, as far as the Quran, um, I actually am somebody who studied Sunni, Shiite, and NOI. And um, there are things about the Quran that I think get a bad rap, but people don't study it. But there are a lot of stuff in there to where you're talking about that I think you should recognize the same, the same principles that I'm talking about, right? I'm not chasing. In other words, let's do it like this. Scripture, right? Goodness and mercy. People use the term goodness, right? Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the family of Adon or the Lord forever, Goodness and mercy, right? Greatness, doing things that are like Elohim and mercy show what? Follow me. But people follow and chase after goodness and mercy. Right? People will follow after goodness and mercy. Right? Myth challenge, well, okay, whatever, right? Once again, as a principle. See, even if you don't believe in the Bible, do you get the principle? <laughs> right? Like people miss this. Once again, they'll miss the information because they reject it. Right? Hosea chapter 4, 6. They'll miss what we're talking about because they are trying to make people feel guilty, which you're not going to make me feel guilty about following principles and having faith. If you believe that you should have the faith that you should be able to say whatever you want and everybody will just go ahead or I'll break down or something because you wrote something. Right? If you have faith to be able to break somebody down, I have faith in things that build the people up. The third thing, though, is time. And people be spending time chasing after goodness and mercy. But clearly, if I'm doing things that are of the right environment and of the right focus, goodness and mercy shall follow me. Right? Goodness and mercy shall what? Shall follow me. Goodness and mercy shall what? Follow me. Yeah, the beast represents something in Hebrew culture. Do you know what the beast represents? Instead of what somebody told you, we actually know what the beast represents. It's not a big deal. Actually, if you know how to read Hebrew, Paleo Hebrew, when it says that 600, six, six, 666 is the number of a name, they're just simply saying write out 666 in Hebrew and then count up what the name is and you'll be able to know what it is. Right? Like, it's not that hard. Hey, Shalom, Bell Canada. We'll go on, fam. Hopefully you're doing well up there. Right? Like, like a lot of people won't just simply look at what it is. But once again, they lack information. They lack information. A lot of us lack information. Look, I've lacked information a lot of times. Shalom, Don. How you doing? I've lacked information. I'm not saying I'm perfect in everything that I've done. Right. But information is out there. The culture is out there. <laughs> right. But you lack information. And then you try to make people feel guilty when you lack the information. Like this is stuff I've known since I was a boy. 
Right. I might have left it alone and became agnostic for a while, but I came back to what was implanted in me because what I was implanted in me was something that was righteous. And when I look at other stuff, thank you, Sharice. When I look at other things, it helps me out to be able to grow. You said Fox is six score. Fox is six score, but I don't know. That is, however, I don't trust the news. Oh, yeah. Fox has nothing to do with six score. 666 is actually just write it out in Hebrew. And if you know Paleo Hebrew, write it out. You'll discover the name. It's code to everybody else. Everybody else trying to figure this stuff out because they don't want to go to the culture. They don't want to go to the information. They're spending time chasing stuff and you're wasting your time. You're exchanging your time for stuff that's false. Like Yashpah did, he, he talked about that Matthew chapter 13, right? Those of you who just did monarchy class, but this this is a little bit of review. We won't go as deep as we went into the into the other stuff. But Matthew chapter 13, um, he gives the parable of the person who sows seed. I believe that's verses 3 through 9. At verse 10, his disciples say, why are you always speaking to the people in coat? Verse 11, he said, or in, in parables. Verse 11, he says, it is not for them to know. Uh oh, people don't like that. But it's not for them. Why? Because they're not of the culture. They don't they don't take time out for it. They're not trying to live kingdom like you live. But he says, since you're trying to live kingdom like I live, let me go ahead and tell you what it actually means, word for word. But he said, and everybody else is gonna come off his code because they don't they they're not intimate with this. That's what Yashua said. I didn't say that. Who you call Jesus? That's what he said. He 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 spoke that. I didn't write that. He said that if you don't know the culture, if you don't have the information, and if you, um, you know, feeling guilty about knowing the information, try to make other people feel guilty about it. And if you're going to be out here trying your best to spend time on stuff that's not kingdom oriented, then I can give you all the kingdom principles. I can give you all the wealthy principles. I can give you all these things that you want. At the end of the day, if you're not about those principles, you're not going to get this. That's facts, right? Somebody that wants to invest, people will call me talking about um, Kofi, I want to invest in cryptocurrency. Can you tell me everything there is to cryptocurrency? I'm like, what, in an hour? In 15 minutes? <laughs> like, what, I, that, where do they do that at? Like, you got to invest in investing. You got to have a mindset of investing. Like, there's classes that we do on this, not because I'm trying to just make sure that you won't pay for something. Like, people just want me to give them the thing for free. Like, there's really, even freedom didn't come free. Like, making us free to be back in the kingdom, somebody had to give their life. In order for you to be created, like, something had to be able to take the spiritual and put it in the physical. Right? He also said those that have ears to ear, right? Especially in Revelation chapters 2 and 3, right? Seven times he says that, right? But people want you to give them the one-size-fits-all thing. That's why I told you, like, this is not just the recipe today. I'm trying to just give you ingredients. And people are arguing over the ingredients, how are you going to get the recipe and you won't even listen to the ingredients? At least gather the ingredients and see if the ingredients are real and see how much the ingredients cost before you start talking about the recipe. We haven't even got to the recipe. We're just giving the ingredients. I didn't even tell you how it's going to taste, how it's going to taste. Because some of this stuff is not going to taste good on the road that you're going through. But if you put these ingredients together, the outcome is going to be amazing. <laughs> you know? You shouldn't be eating cake, a bunch of cake batter by itself. But when you let the cake batter mix with the other, you know, mix with the other stuff supposed to and then rise and then sit there for a little bit. And then you put that icing on, it's going to have a whole different experience. Right. Like you shouldn't be eating the raw egg, but you might have to put a raw egg up in there. But the raw egg in and of itself is not necessarily a pleasant experience. Especially when, if you're doing something where you got to put that raw egg in. If you're like me, sometimes when you uh, when you do your meat or whatever, um, every once in a while, I don't do meat that much anymore. But I'll still every once in a while put an egg in that thing. Right. And let it let it let it go through some things. Put my hands in there. That's not necessarily a pleasant experience. It doesn't feel great. But man, when I eat that thing, it's going to be banging. <laughs> right. Like there's a whole bunch of stuff. I don't say Jesus. I don't say, first of all, his name wouldn't even been Jesus at the time. The nickname would have been Yesu or Yesus because they didn't even have the letter J. Um, secondly, though, I don't say Jesus because that's not his name. His name was Yashua. So I choose to give him the authority that he was supposed to have. Um, but, well, once, you know, but I'm not really here to focus on that, so to speak. Right. He said, when you have time, please explain culture. We explain the culture every day. So I'm explaining the kingdom culture now. But, you know, we, we definitely can talk about the culture more because we have to do another video since they took away the first YouTube page and we've been building the second one. We're going to have to eventually at some point go back to from culture to habits and just focus on that. Right. But culture informs everything else. I see you, Cole, in the fullness thereof. Right. Culture is going to inform everything else, everything, everything else is going to come out your culture. Right. So. So. But but people who are wealthy, not just rich. 
People who are wealthy do not spend time or do not spend time exchanging time for things that are not worth their time. In other words, I'm not going to chase after goodness and mercy. If you promise me the goodness and mercy come out of this or whatever. No, nope. anything that I do that's righteous, goodness and mercy have to follow me. Teach me righteousness. And I guarantee goodness and mercy. You can chase goodness and mercy. Maybe you'll catch it. But that's not a biblical principle. Biblical principle says be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding. Guess what's coming behind you? Goodness and mercy. <laughs> you said I got you hollering over here. Um, I'm in. We praise you. YouTube is hashtag find Kofi. Hashtag F-I-N-D-K-O-F-I. Once again, hashtag find the Kofi. F-I-N-D and my name. Hashtag find Kofi. Um, but yeah, you know, people have a wild time with this or whatever because people are arguing things that have nothing to do with culture. You said nobody did anything at all to be born within a set of imaginary lines. Very true. Oh, thank you, Minister Nice. I see you. I appreciate you, sis. More than you'll ever know. I wish I could show my appreciation a lot greater, right? Yeah, egg is the binder, right? But egg is the binder, but you're not supposed to just... Well, I guess some people eat raw eggs for for protein i wouldn't suggest that <laughs> but you know some people do i guess when you're doing your workout or whatever you know, but at the end of the day like if you try to gain a whole bunch of muscle mass some people just down eggs like that i don't but you know um but look at the end of the day that's that's where we're that, that's what we're heading towards right so you got to understand wealthy people they got information that's an ingredient so every wealthy person you're going to meet has information I don't care how dumb you think they're like people think Donald Trump is stupid. Donald Trump is one of the smartest dudes out there. Don't get it twisted. Donald Trump is a is a multi-billionaire who decided to say that he was going to file for bankruptcy. Where they do that? Where they get away with that? You ain't stupid. <laughs> right? People got mad at Donald Trump. Talking about Donald Trump, you know, he only paid 400 and something dollars for his taxes. I was I said, "Yo, you should be mad that you paying more than 400 something dollars for your taxes." If he's only paying for it, matter of fact, I got mad at Donald Trump. If you guys remember who were here with me, I was like, yo, you shouldn't have even paid 400 and something. Like, you need to fire somebody. You paid 400 and something dollars on taxes? Why are you still a U.S. citizen at this point with all that money? Why are you not sovereign? Why are you not tax free? You're right. Like, why? Like, you, hopefully, you guys understand that if you have passive income, which he's got a whole lot of, to passive income is not taxable. Even if you pay taxes, passive income is not taxable. How in the world you got that much passive income and you owe taxes? I was like, Donald Trump is stupid in that regard. But you ain't. But you you don't get to his level. Even if even if he was born into it, you don't get to his level and be stupid. He might be stupid about certain dates and when a president lived and then live and all that stuff. But he's not making the money he's making because he's stupid. He has information. No matter how you feel about him, I'm not saying Donald Trump is a person that we should bow down to in any way, shape, or form. But he ain't stupid. Number one, wealthy people, they got information. Number two, they will not feel guilty about being rich, right? I'm not going to feel bad about having land. You got all this land. Look, I'm not going to feel guilty about it. Now, do I agree? Hey, Bill Gates, maybe you could give half your land to somebody else that a lot of people that are homeless could have somewhere to stay, right? Like, we could talk about that, but I'm talking about as far as owning the land. I'm not going to feel bad about that. Owning land? No. Right. Like I don't feel bad. Rich or wealthy people don't feel bad about having. And you're supposed to have. We've been taught even in churches. I'm telling you, this is church lingo. Right. I came out of church. I didn't I wasn't born and raised in church, but I did go to church for a significant part of my life. 20 years. Right. I was involved with church and being involved with church these 20 years or well, maybe 18 or so years. Or, no, actually, I guess maybe 16. I'm lying. I'm sorry. Maybe it's more like 16. Right. Years I've been involved in church. And so I learned the customs and traditions. I played played and, and preached at the white churches. I played and preached at the black churches. I played and preached at the Catholic churches. I played and preached at a lot of different places. I played and preached at temples. I played and preached at mosques. I played and preached at Buddhist temples. I played and preached with yogis and, yo and people of yoga. I'm telling you, like, and all the stuff that there is and all the stuff that people have, people will try to make you feel guilty about having. Somebody wants to bless you with something. See? They just taking their money and the pastor's going to put shoes on their feet. I'm like, man, shoot, I wish I had all this money y'all talking about. I wish I had all these Stacey Adams and stuff that y'all swear I got on my feet. Anybody, when y'all see me, y'all see me in sandals. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right? I wish I had all this stuff, but I'm I'm wealthy. But I wish what all these people said that I had, I actually had. You know, I wish that it was like that. I really do. I really do. Hold on one second. Now.
So yeah, so I wish. I wish it was where everybody said. But once again, you're gonna want information. Uh, you, you, an ingredient is not feeling guilty. Another ingredient is that they don't trade time for stuff that's not valuable enough. Right? Envy and jealousy are evil. The 10th commandment is what? Not to covet, right? So we should stay away from coveting. Wondering what somebody else has. What's for you is for you. You don't have to worry about what everybody else has, okay? Next thing up, right? Now that we talked about that, is that they don't trade time for frivolous things, right? Um, next, next thing up, or actually, yeah. So they don't trade time for frivolous things. Um, Uh-oh, I'm forgetting the fourth one. I don't want to go to the fifth one. I need the last one to stay last. Uh, Holy Spirit, help me. What is it? They don't spend time on stuff. They don't trade time. Mm. Wow. Holy Spirit, help me. We might have to skip to number five. I'm going to see if I can find it real quick. Y'all give me a second. On the podcast, I'm sorry, you're probably going to hear some hear some stuff going on because I got it I got it queued up on my stuff from when I was going through this thought process yesterday I just want to make sure I give this to you guys I apologize we, I thought this stuff was was there and it's not there hmm okay here we go I got this point from this brother speaking here. Hold on one second. That's what it is. Oh, wait a minute, no, I just said that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. So I guess we hit that one. What is it? Oh, okay. Here we go. And Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Katie. Here we go. Okay. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Um, oh, I lost it. Oh, we might. It might not be for us tonight. I can't find. Mm. Okay, that's what it is. Sorry. All right. Here it is make you you will make stuff you make things subject to you all right that's what it is thank you holy spirit i was struggling i apologize y'all i'm a human being sometimes that happens make things subject to you all right whether it's your land whether it's the food that you grow whether it's the money that you have etc right yeah, I was praying <laughs> in the spirit. I was trying to figure out what the world that thing was. Holy Spirit, praise her for bringing that to back to my remembrance, right? So, um, you know, but you got to start thinking to yourself, like you make things subject to you, right? So you make things work for you. We are in a system where we're used to having to make have things or work for things. We have to work for things, but things should work for you, right? We make things work subject to us not people i'm thank you for putting that in the in the comment uh, minister tamar because we don't believe in being leaders over people we believe in being leaders over an environment y'all catch that one of the reasons why a lot of people can't lead that well is because you're trying so hard to lead people rather than lead an environment right right so we make sure that think we don't work for things right we don't chase after goodness and mercy things work for us genesis chapter 1 verse 28 right he said he wanted them to be what fruitful he wanted us to be fruitful to multiply to replenish and subdue subdue sub underneath me do what is due to me the things that are underneath me are due to me right you trying to look for things. You're like, oh, man, that thing up there, I want it. Until it's underneath you, you, you it's, it doesn't owe you a thing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. See, until you comprehend that the government is filled with public servants, and therefore they serve the public, and therefore you would be the master, you will not treat a public servant correct. You will incorrectly believe that the governor is over you instead of realizing that the governor 
is under you. When you realize the governor is under you, you talk to the governor different. When you realize you're not employable, you're not supposed to be on somebody else's thing and they're taking all, half of your money um, before you even see it and then somebody else can come behind it and take more of your money and if you don't go ahead and give them all that money that you worked for that you were promised on the contract, that's how much you're going to get. If you don't give them all the money that you were promised, then you're going to go to jail. Somebody going to come behind them and make money off you too. Making money off of your straw man, right? And the straw man was created specifically so that hopefully one day you would give in and agree with the straw man. That's why the straw man was created. The straw man was created so that hopefully people out there would believe that they have more in common with the straw man than they actually do with their actual self. <laughs> right? Right? That's, that's literally what the straw man was created for, that hopefully you would, that the reason your birth certificate exists is because somebody was hoping and praying, right? Literally, somebody was hoping and praying. And those that are on Facebook, we're going to have to get ready to jump off of here pretty soon. I apologize. Um, thanks for being on. Um, you know, actually, we're going to get ready to jump off of all these, but Facebook, we're going to have to get off a little earlier. But somebody was hoping and praying, right, that you and I were going to one day identify more with a fake person than with our real selves. Right. But you're supposed to make things subject to you. Wealthy people don't mind making things subject to, to them. We get mad or whatever, but wealthy people flex. You know why? Because kings flex. Queens flex. Royalty flexes on people. And you've been taught that you should never flex. Thank you, Minister Tamra. Yeah. You know, you've been taught that you should never flex. You've been taught that it's wrong. You go to you go to church, but they, they, them, but the same church that will tell you not to flex, they flex on you all the time. They, don't they got them big old hats? Are they going to make sure they got that priestly robe? Right? The flexing is supposed to make sure that people comprehend who you are. But you've been taught that if you flex, you're wrong. No, look, I don't go around trying to flex, but look, I don't I don't dress up or dress down. Somebody told you know somebody told you a lie a long time ago. That there's a time that you should dress dress up. Kings don't ever have the luxury. Queens don't ever have the luxury of dressing up or dressing down. They set the standard all day, every day. Whatever they do, because they're royalty, other people pay attention to. People, The reason why women go down the aisle, because this is not biblical at all, but the reason why you walk down the aisle, make sure there's a preacher set here, make sure you wear a white dress, have the veil on, right, that gets lifted, make sure that you have the, um, the I'm sorry, not the veil, the is that a veil too? I don't know. Somebody help me. I don't know. But you, you know, you got the veil behind you. You got the veil, or is this the this the veil? And this is the the train. Excuse me. The train is behind you. All the reason why you got all that that you do, and then sign the marriage certificate and do all this. The reason why it has nothing to do with the Bible. That's not mar marriage in the Bible anywhere. You've never seen it in the Bible. The reason why you do that is because somebody who was royal flexed one day. She said, "You know, when I get married, I'm gonna make sure I flex on him." Her. Her train was so long that it was a half a mile behind her. They had people making sure it wouldn't touch the ground for a half a mile behind her. She was flexing on them. She was letting them know that the queen's about to give up her virginity, even though we could question whether she was a virgin or not. That's another story for another day. At the end of the day, though, that's what she was trying to say. Like, look, a queen is about to become one with somebody. I'm flexing on you to show what's about to happen. And the marriage is going to cause me to be greater in my country, to be better. I'm flexing on you. And she flexed so well on y'all that you gave up what your marriage ceremony was supposed to be. And you do what she did. To this day in Africa, I don't care where you are, in America, in South America, in Europe, in Australia, you people are getting married like she got married simply because she flexed on y'all so hard that people still to this day are trying to make sure they copy her flex. They're trying to jock her style. Right. So to speak, I know that's an old school term for some. Right. But they try. They, they 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 hanging on her. You know what? Like we used to say back in the day, stop hanging on my you know what? Right. Like like they jocking her style. That's all it is. She flexed so hard that the whole world took notice. <laughs> Think about that. She flexed so hard. That, but that's what kings and queens do. She just did what she did. She said, when I get married, I got to make sure people comprehend what this marriage piece really is. And so now, still to this day, you get married the way that she did because she flexed. Can you imagine if you started to flex on folk just because you are who you are? I don't have to worry about somebody coming on here. Oh, you know, you know, you know what somebody's saying when they go, oh, I don't like this strand of hair that's hanging here. I don't like the fact you don't cut this. Do you know what? Like, in all honesty, in these things that y'all think are like so loose, I'm pulling on it now. I'm pulling hard on it. Right. That's 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 flex. I mean, I could just cut it, but I feel that people will be thinking this stuff is connected. Like I feel when I do like this with my finger or whatever, but this is flexing and somebody out there, they gonna have a problem when I flex myself. That's great. 
I'm not supposed to present anything else, right? I'm going to give you who I am. And if you can't handle the flex, then you, not everybody can be in the presence of greatness. That's not on me. I told one of the things I've been telling my son recently, one of the most recent things I've been telling him, um, especially now that he's in his YouTube channel and in his bag and stuff, and he's going to start learning what dad does and he's going to be greater than me. I told him that greatness is, is too low a bar for you. Like you are so great that I can't even allow you to think that greatness is acceptable. Right. Like you got to flex in your life so hard. You got to flex so hard in the spirit. You got to flex so hard in the mentality that you have. You got to flex so hard in how you how you the style that you present. You got to flex so hard in your YouTube videos, your flips, your kung fu kicks, all the stuff that people watching about you. You got to be on such a, such a great point. You got to be on such a high level of focus because your greatness is too low a bar for you. You're too great to, for, to, to say that greatness is all right. You see what I'm saying? So when you say hashtag flex COVID, I, uh, that's cool. Actually, that's cool. I don't know. We're going to come up with some shirts again uh, before the end of this year. So maybe that'll be one. I don't know. We want to come up with some more spiritually sound ones first. But, you know, I, I, I don't mind that. That's cool. I like that. All right. But but like you, you got to flex. Kings and queens, they flex. Kings and queens don't mind flexing. They don't mind saying, yo, this is who I am. This is what I am. Like when I step into a room, the room should take notice. Like people don't get it. When I step into yeah, the room should take notice when I step in the room. I should look different and people go, who is that? What is he wearing? Why is his hair like that? Why are his children's hair like that? Why his wife, you know, iced out? You know, like that's 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 the goal. Like it should be that. And not because I'm trying. Watch this. It's not even because I'm trying. It's because my natural demeanor, your natural demeanor should be what? Flex. Your natural demeanor, demeanor, your your standard for yourself is that greatness is too low because you serve somebody that's greater than everybody else. Check this out, right? If you are in a world where everybody else, the, this is First Timothy, right? This is Second Timothy. Let's go Second Timothy, right? If you in Second Timothy chapter three, right? Through Second Timothy chapter four, verse five, six, whatever, and the world is that evil, that chaotic, lovers of themselves, about magic. Um, and instead of about the real thing, um, women being tricked into doing things that are lascivious and all types of things like brothers out here being lovers of themselves, the homosexuality or what people call homosexuality, all these different things. Right. They want their ears itched and all these things. And you're supposed to be greater. That means you don't even fit in. Why are you trying to fit in? Why are you worried about making sure the government is OK with what you do? The government shouldn't be OK with what you do. It should be a fight for you to have sovereignty. Because you don't fit in. You're not on the plantation. Anybody that's not on the plantation is a threat to the plantation. Any of y'all seen, this is like one of the last few movies I really, really got into. I don't really do movies like that anymore. But anybody y'all seen, you know, Django, right? Django um, Unchained or whatever it was called, right? But Django, right? DJ, DJ A N G O, the one that was made by Quentin Tarantino, right? And Jamie Foxx, after he goes to the process of of being, you know, um, being with the German cat and all that stuff. And um, he shows up, they're going to go after his wife, right? They're going to go after his wife and be able to save her, right? Because he did what he's supposed to do. He's helped the German guy, the German guy's going to help him, whatever. So he's going after his wife, who um, was a slave too. He was separated from her. He wants to be able to free her. And they go into Candyland, right? Where Miss, Monsieur Candy or whatever, you know, um, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, did a great job with it, by the way, because I still can't stand Leo DiCaprio now. <laughs> when I see him in anything, now I see him in Titanic. I'm like, he races. <laughs> That's how great a job he did. Like, it, it, you know, one of the last times it was pretty easy for me to suspend disbelief on that level where I still get caught up, right? But he, they went there, and before all that stuff happened, before the shootout scene, before you think he's going to be, you know, have his testicles removed and all the stuff that it goes into the wild stuff, before all that happens, he first shows up on the plantation, and his and he's perplexed, like. Can't like um whatever his re I forget what his first name was, but whatever Mr. Candy's name is, he has a problem with Django the whole time because there's this black dude who's free. That's like his he's like fascinated with it. He still treats everybody else like crap, but he's like, you know, and then he even like asked Jamie Foxx, you know, even though he's playing like this because he's trying to save his wife, but he even like tries to get Jamie Foxx to get angry. And Jamie just keeps basically being like, man, I'm not, I don't care about that N-word over there. Like, he's not on my level, right? Now, I'm not trying to say that's the principle, what, right, that we should leave only. But what I'm trying to get is, is that what, that what perplexed Candy was that there's this black dude who doesn't think 
like Samuel L. Jackson's character. He was not afraid of him, even like his own wife, even though Candy doesn't know that's his own wife, right? Like, he, he sees this dude who should be afraid of everybody, yet he'll smack an overseer. He should he sees a dude that should be afraid of him and shouldn't be shouldn't even want to look him in the eye, but he'll look him in the eye. Everybody else, you know, even the dude who tried to run away. If you remember the scene where they show the dude that gets torn up by the dogs, even that dude before he gets torn up, Candy is looking is bending down in front of him and looking at him, and the dude still can't bring himself up to 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 go like this, right? He's still looking down because he can't look him in the eye. He can't look him in the eye. But here's this dude who should be afraid of him who's just looking at him and talking to him, right? Has no problem doing so, right? He doesn't make sense to him, right? He doesn't make sense to him, yet, yeah, right? He, but he, there's this guy, he makes things subject to him, but he's not supposed to. It's confusing to people when you make things subject to you and it's not supposed to happen. I'm not supposed to exist in this country. I'm not supposed to be an educated black man spiritually sound, um, can speak about m real marriage and at the same time love somebody who wants to do a false version of marriage, can somehow some way have it where he's supposed to be taken down multiple times on multiple platforms and keeps coming back. It's causing his community to become greater and somehow some way hasn't ran into somebody yet that's tried to take him out or at least they haven't been successful yet, right? Like I'm not supposed to exist. I'm not supposed to have in this country, I'm not supposed to have all that and have a great marriage and be faithful to one wife. Right. I'm not supposed to exist. I'm not supposed to exist to where I'm able to travel and don't have to worry about who tries to pull me over. Because even if you try to pull me over, guess what? You can't detain me. I'm not supposed to exist. You're not supposed to exist. You're not supposed to be as powerful as you are. You're not supposed to be as amazing and handsome and beautiful and attractive and attractive in your spirit to people. You're not supposed to exist. You're not supposed to be able to take care of your child, even though you're dealing with sickness. You're not supposed to have survived. Some doctors counted you out at birth, and yet you still you are here 50, 60 years later. You're not supposed to exist. But you make things subject to you. Understand, people will be upset with that when they come into contact with you. Because you're not supposed to exist. You're not supposed to do what you're doing. How dare you do what you're doing? People get upset. They'll get mad at you. My husband doesn't treat me like your husband treats you. What they got to do with me? I make things subject. When I submit to my husband, I submit to him because he submits until dawn, which means that both of us submit one to each other. So when we submit to each other, anything that we want, it's subject to us. It's supposed to be that way. Wealthy people make things subject to them. Right? Period. They don't argue with you. They ain't got to go through a long thing. You can, you can write whatever you want in the paper about them. Right? Jeff Bezos did his wife dirty. Right? Somebody said, we're going to go. Right? Even though he did his wife dirty, somebody said, you know what? Fine. You did your wife dirty. I caught you, bro. Hey, if you don't want me to write about this in the paper, what I'm going to do is that you need to go ahead and pay me certain certain amount of millions of dollars or whatever you can afford it you're a multi-billionaire guess what jeff bezos said he said oh yeah okay watch me bought the paper sued the person <laughs> right bought the paper sued the person got the person basically put in jail for right for trying to um for trying to uh, blackmail him and then said you know what i don't want to be with this woman anyways gave her made her this like basically overnight one of the richest people on, on the planet and said, look, I did you wrong. We don't want to be together anyways. You know, this is a facade. And yeah, I've been kind of doing stuff behind your back. Here you go. You can be one of the richest people in the world. Now, I'm not saying everything about that is ethical or even moral, right? We're not morally correct. What I'm saying, though, is that he he's in a position to where what? He makes things subject. You try to, you try to do that to me, got you. Right? Got you. I'm not saying you want to be able to cheat on your wife. That's not what we're saying. I'm telling you, he's in a position to where somebody tried to do what they did to him. He said, okay, I got you. Yeah, extortion. That'd be a better term, right? Right? Extortion, whatever, right? He said, I'm in a position. I don't, I don't, I don't bow down to anybody, right? I don't have to do that. So you thought that you were going to come to me off of some $50 million? Like, I'll show you. I'll buy something for more money than what you gave, and then I'll put you in jail because I own I own enough. I own, right? So all those things that we're talking about. And the last thing we're going to talk about 
the last ingredient and then I'm done and then I'll make sure I show it on the board in a little bit. We got to take our leave so that we can be ready for the podcast. It's going to start at 10 a.m. Eastern and we'll get more information on that to make sure if you want to be part of the live podcast and listen to the sisters talk uh, for, the, you know, for the next month, really, for the next four Saturdays um, on Shabbat Shalom on the Kofi Footy podcast. Right. Check this out. Last thing the rich people do. And I'm going to write it over here. I'm going to show you the list in a second. Last thing that rich. Excuse, excuse me. I only messed up. I almost messed up. Last thing that wealthy people do, because I don't know if I necessarily call Jeff Bezos wealthy. He's very rich, but some of you would consider him to be wealthy, so I use him as a thing. Last one, though. So first, they have information. That's the first ingredient. Second ingredient, they don't feel guilty about having things. Third um, um, ingredient, they don't trade time for things. It's not worth their time. Fourth thing, they make things subject to them. The last thing that they do, uh, that um, wealthy people do, check this out. Wealthy people will... How do we want to say this? Wealthy people, um, wealthy people, oh, you know what? I'm going to write it like this. Wealthy people represent value. Or no, you know what? I'm going to write it the way it is. Holy Spirit told me to write it different. I'm trying to do something different. Let me be obedient. Wealthy people serve value. Right. They serve value. Now, you might call this a valuable service. I know you can't see the board because we're not going to show the board until the end. I have everything set up to where it's pointing towards me. So we have five things that we've talked about. If you haven't been here the whole time, we'll make sure that we turn the board. All right. Turn it to the board. Right. All right. But I have a lot of different things showing at the same time. And so, yes, I don't have it facing the board at this moment. But once again, we said it quite a few times. If you want, you'll be able to take a screenshot of it probably in like five minutes or so. Right. Because we got to get ready to take our leave and get ready for the podcast. But number one, they have information. Number two, they're not good. Hey, babe, my wife, the Honorable Maya is on Bloom and Flourish. You can follow her on TikTok, YouTube and her website. Uh, but number one ingredient, they have information. Number two, you'll find they all don't feel guilty about having what they need. Number three, um, uh, they all don't don't give up time for things that are not worth that valuable time. Number four, they make things subject to them. Number five, they all serve serve up value. They serve value to you. Or you could say they have a valuable service. They make whatever they do, they bring value to the table. This is with somebody who's wealthy. Can you say that everything you do is valuable? Because if everything you do is valuable, then everything you do is something that causes wealth. Right? There are people on here that could care less about my, um, what people would call religious point of view. There are people on here that could care less about that. They really could. They could care less about that. They don't, they don't, there's nothing in them that says that they have to make sure that, you know, they believe in what I believe in. But you know why they're listening in spite of? Because what they get is valuable. Right? Some people take advantage of that, sure. But once again, wealthy people don't just serve value. They make things subject to them. So if you're going to come to me for value and you're going to keep utilizing me and using me and using me and think that that's all it's going to be, but you're not going to sow, we, we're not going to do that. You're going to sow something. You're going to sow a kind word. You're going to sow a thank you. You're going to sow every once in a while. Hey, you might not be able to give me something I gave you back, but you're at least going to be able to make sure that you give me something to help. If you're just using me, then that's something that wealthy people don't do because wealthy people don't watch this. Once again, wealthy people don't invest time in stuff that's not worth their time. If you show me that I wasted time with you, even if it was seconds, you show me like, for example, I tell you guys this, even people that disagree with us, right? Um, I will allow them to still call me, contact me, email me. Let's set up conversation, right? I don't mind um, having somebody disagrees with me, talk to them or whatever. So watch this. I had somebody who was on or we had somebody who was on the line. I don't remember if it was from, I, I want to say it was yesterday in the rising. Um, it was yesterday in the rising. Somebody came on, they ended up getting blocked. While the, while we were still doing the live, they decided to start trying to call on the phone. I didn't answer. I clicked it off so that we could still remain on TikTok and I wouldn't end up being off the device. Um, they then left me a message and, you know, the number that I have set up, it, it transcribes the message so then I can read it. So it popped up a notification telling me what they were. They were cussing me out and saying all this stuff on there, right? Um, once we, so so basically they got on there, they got mad and stuff. They said all this stuff and I, I didn't even respond. I didn't call. I responded, I didn't call. 
Um, I read everything that they said, you know, you a BA N word and all this stuff and all you guys on the live are BA N words and this and that went through on this long thing. Right. So I, I texted him and I said, look, um, I see all this stuff that you put on there and that you called with. And I said, the moderators do what they're asked to do, which is to make sure that they're protective of this environment. So people come on here and lie a lot. We may and do stuff to try and get us to not be able to to meet because this is not just us talking. We actually come and meet up with each other and meet outside of just these lives, right? So people are trying to like take away something, <coughs> excuse me, that causes us to be family. So we can't have that. So the moderators are allowed to. We trust them. These are people that I know and that we've had conversations with over some time now. And we say, hey, you know, if you need to take care of something for us, take care of it, right? <clears throat> excuse me. And so if they did what they were supposed to do, I'm not mad at them, but you're calling me all these words or whatever. I'm not even the one that blocked you. However, I trust the ones that block you. And if that's something that literally you're going to do to me on the phone, then maybe it was good that you were blocked. Either way, though, I hope that you continue to go down the path of knowledge and it still doesn't cause, us, cause me to hate you. And I want you to know that I still got much love for you. Have a great day. He texts right after that. He texts me back. And says, well, that's understandable. But then what does he do? At the end, he says, but your moderators are still moderate. Basically, said trying to, he has to end with ad hominem making fun of people. So when I saw that, I said, all that showed what? It's a good thing that he went ahead and got rid of. I put, I spent a little bit of time. I invested a little bit of time, like right, a minute or so to write all that out on the text. I invested that time. I sent it to him. Saw what his response was. Saw what he had sent in the first place and realized I don't need to go any further. Now, back in the day, I probably would have tried to call him up and been like, why would you do that? And we're doing this and still praying for you and blah, blah. I, that would have been a waste of time with that mindset. He already showed me. Like when somebody says, no, you need to just give everything. Give. No, no, no. He showed me that would have been a waste of my time. It would have been a waste of your time. There's somebody I was supposed to contact, right? I would have been able to contact that person had I been making sure I was putting time in somebody. And that person I'm contacting, they invest time in us. They invest time in the community. That's it, right. And so I haven't been able to talk to this person in a long time. I want to make sure I reached out to him. And if I had wasted time with somebody who showed me they weren't worthy of the time anyways, what would have been the point of that? Right. Right. But even somebody like him, how did he get my number? He obviously had to watch before when we gave the number out. Right. So he got the number. He watches us. He does stuff. But he showed. Right. And why, so even though he's that off right now, as far as what we're trying to be consistent in, and I got to get ready to end soon so we can be ready for the podcast. Um, you know, but basically somebody on his level, he still came. Why? Because he got value. Even if the value was nothing more than, even if he was disagreeable, even if he was a troll, even if, right, something in him was coming back and listening to us. Why? Because he got value. He might have had a bad day. He might have, right? Um, at the end, right? And he still has a number if at some point he wants to actually open up communication and be, a, you know, treat me as a human being and treat the moderators as human beings. Right. But he, so he might have had a bad day. He's not I'm not here to condemn him and put him in heaven or hell. Right. But at the end of the day, like he had a bad day. He had an experience that he's got to deal with that. He's got to learn how to apologize. He's got to learn how to be real about that. That's stuff I've had to learn. Right. He might be a young man. I don't know if he's old or young. He might be a 19 year old boy. That's still trying to learn how to be a man. And he had a, you know, little boys, they have, um, they have little tirades, you know, two year olds, they, they have a toddler session. You know, we got some 19 year old, we got some 52 year old, two year old boys <laughs> and mentally, right. You know what I'm saying? We have some 50 year old, 52 year old toddlers that stress out like that. Right. So it's not for me to be upset or say he can never be better or to make him look bad. I'm not going to tell you his name. I'm not going to tell you what his name was the name of the person that got blocked. That doesn't, that's not necessary. Right. But what I will tell you is that like he came and he saw value. There's a lot of people who might not even like you serve value anyways. That's why you don't like Jeff Bezos, but you'll still serve, but do, he serves you value through Amazon. So guess what? You'll still get stuff through Amazon. Won't you? Right. The wall, the uh, Walmart, that family doesn't take care of their employees, but you'll still go to Walmart because they serve you value. There are people that didn't like what Chick-fil-A had to say about people that, you know, are of different, whatever they try to call genders and all this stuff. Well, guess what? When you went to what they what they were still showing them Chick-fil-A for them nuggets, though, because they serve value and they were paying more money for them nuggets than they pay for a whole meal sometimes somewhere else. Right. You get that 12 count nugget, ain't that 12 count nugget, like six, seven dollars, <laughs> six and some change, seven dollars. 
right? Just just for the nuggets by themselves. That's not the meal. You can mess around and get the meal. You're talking about 10 plus for a meal, right? And you go other places, you might be able to get, you know, you go to Burger King, you can get, what, two meals for $10? You go to McDonald's, you, well, I, don't, I haven't done McDonald's in a long time, but McDonald's just give a lot, but they serve you value. A serve, they serve you value, don't they? And so when you when when they serve you value, you'll pay for value. Wealthy people, they serve value. So people pay what they what they feel like they what they're getting. And matter of fact, if you serve proper value, especially if it's eternal value, you'll never be able to actually afford what you're paying for. So when people try to make you feel guilty about that, don't worry about it. I'm gonna end on my wife's comment, then we gotta get off. And um she's gotta make sure that people are um on a little early so we can test things out, make sure that our panel is ready. Um my wife said there's a thing called self-control dude who shot the asian people was given the excuse of a bad day i mean that's as real as it gets so we're gonna leave it there for those who wanted to see the board let me make sure that i switch it so you guys can see it the right way i'll make sure that i do the mirror for you guys all right so there you go those are the five we talked about on this rising all right so this is the five ingredients of wealth the first two came from conversation that my wife and i um and then the last three are um things that i heard and um, that I studied and that I kind of put together. Matter of fact, the guy we were listening to, I think he actually mentions all three of them. <laughs> if I think about it, he actually mentions all three. But once again, here's five ingredients. This isn't even the recipe. The recipe means this is the way we're going to put these things in place. So that's what we come on here for every day. All right. OK, but number one, right, take a screenshot. We're not going to be on here long. I got to get ready to go get on the podcast if you want to be on the podcast with us live you can listen to the podcast at any time but if you want to be on with us live you have to make sure you have the pod being at p-o-d-b-e-a-n all right um so if you want to be with us live that'll be in a little bit but um take a screenshot if you need to we gave the points over and over and over again so if you were writing them you could have already had them down right sometimes we get so used to seeing it or this and that sometimes get used to even making your little mental maps and stuff might help you to have it even more but here you go here's the board Number one ingredient, information. If you don't have information, you ain't going to go but so far. Number two, don't feel guilty, right? When people try to make, when people try to say, oh, you know, um, there they, there she is again. There they are again. They ask for money. They want to do that. No, no, no. Like, don't feel guilty. Like, you're supposed to, you're supposed to be able to, to have, right? You're supposed to be a fellow heir. Number three, don't trade time. Don't trade time for stuff. Time is valuable, right? So don't trade time for stuff that is not va of, of value or of equal value or at least close to equal value. Time you can't get back. So whatever I'm going to give you time for, if you're going to call me talking about, can you give me time for this, right? Or people will even tell you, if they call me, they have an experience calling me, just like they have an experience with these lives. You know why? Because if you were wor wor willing to give me your time, then I'm going to make sure I give you something greater than the time that you invested in me, right? Then make sure that uh, you understand wealthy people make things subject to them. That's an ingredient. Make it subject to you, right? Stop talking about, oh, well, maybe I'll do, or if somebody lets me, or if the job does, right? You got to have a, a, a setup, an environment in your life where things are made subject to you. And then lastly, wealthy people, they serve up value. They serve up value, right? They, they give you a valuable service. They serve value. They give you things that are of value, all right? They give you things that will cause you to be able to value yourself, right? To value what you're doing, to value your finances, to put proper value on relationships, whatever it is. Somebody who serves. A lot of people who are coming here, they're not coming here because they like Kofi. Some of you do, but some of y'all have never even met me or talked to me. Some of you, though, will come back consistently, and even donate to things we're doing and even ask us what we can, what you can do to help and never have even really had a full conversation. Why? Because we serve you something that's valuable. And because you get something that's valuable, you want to serve what serves you. Be the five ingredients um, when it comes to being wealthy. That being said, got to jump off. Make sure that we're in position. We appreciate the king and queen and each and every one of you. Once again, we're going to have the Shabbat Shalom um, episode for this Shabbat Shalom um, on or for this Shabbat on the podcast, The Kofi of 40 Podcast. My name, The Kofi of 40 Podcast. You, if you want to join us live, you have to have the Podbean app, P-O-D-B-E-A-N. Look it up. Um, join us. Be part of that discussion. We're thankful. We're grateful. Um, we're excited. This next, These next four Shabbats are going to be led by our ladies. Um, we're going to um, have some of our married ladies come together and have a little panel and have discussion and we're grateful and thankful to each and every one of them and each and every one of you so prayerfully we'll see you in a little bit not today but next shabbat will be when right after shabbat shalom then at around 11 a.m whenever as soon as the shabbat shalom podcast finishes we'll be in position to where we're going to have our um our meeting 
all right, our meetings, which will probably be like 45, 30, 30 minutes to an, an hour usually, uh, where we start having our meetings. So those who are waiting for the meetings want to be part of that and participate in that, that'll be not today, next Shabbat, November 20th. All right. So thank you all for being on. I appreciate the King and Queen and each and every one of you. And um, our prayers that you be hearers of this word, not doers as well. Please, once again, follow my wife. Find her, the uh, Honorable Bloom and Flourish, hashtag find Bloom. You can follow her on TikTok, YouTube, and her website um, at Bloom and Flourish. Not A-N-D, but the letter N, Bloom and Flourish. You can follow her on TikTok, YouTube, and her website. And um, we thank you. We're grateful. We appreciate you. Follow my son as well, 777 Solomon So just hashtag find Solomon. Look for him on YouTube. TikTok as well. Um, and we're grateful. To, oh, and also Roblox. We're thankful and grateful for him being somebody that can be part of the community and the children who want to grow and learn and go through things with him as well. So we thank you. We appreciate you all. As always, this has been Pastor Kofi, aka the Shadow Band One, Pastor of Servant to Christ, where we are always changing lives one mind at a time by being a voice of the voices and speaking the unspoken until we have the great privilege, opportunity, and responsibility of being in front of you all again. Please remember, as always, that you are loved, you are necessary, you are majestic, you are fearfully and wonderfully made, and you which is all of us working together, will be the reason why people who are in this system no longer have to be of it. Shabbat Shalom. Peace.